obviously your name is, has been in these streets so when it came to how things have gone over the last few days. What do you feel comfortable telling us about how what it was like for you to learn that the coach had been dismissed and your name being linked with being one of the, the, the key tail signs that something was wrong inside the locker room? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, honestly, I don't really give a damn about really too much of it. At the end of the day, for me, it's one of those things where uh, at some point enough is enough, um, just as far as expressing frustrations. Um, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I found out through ESPN of the firing first and then received some phone calls, texts after that. But, I mean... At the end of the day, it's not my first go around. It's not my first rodeo with firing and things like that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's a business. Guys get fired all the time. Player, coach, GM, it happens. So, I mean, again, I don't necessarily feel like I was just some major part that played played a role in getting him fired. I mean, that's not that's not on me. But I mean, at the end of the day, too, there was frustration. There was words from myself that I expressed just from. My frustrations are losing. I mean, like I said, and part of what I said after the game is, I mean, I've been losing for five years. So, I mean, I feel like a high-level player like myself, has, after a certain point, losing games, how we've been losing games, somebody has to express something. And, I mean, for me, it was something that was a spirit of moment thing, and it went the way it went at the end of the day. You know, Jalen, we know you enough to know that you believe in communicating with intention, and you believe in... I think you believe in the power of positive confrontation. Is that fair to say? Like, you know, say stuff. If stuff needs to get said, say it like men and, and talk about it. So, you know, what what did you feel needed to be said at that point in the room? Honest, I can't even give you the details because it was one of those situations where it just it just got to that point where you don't really – remember everything I was said. I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, it was just based around frustrations of losing. Um, that's what that's what triggered it. Just hearing some certain things and seeing the way things have went these past few weeks. And I mean, again, from the outside looking in, you can say it's the last few weeks for me. It's been the last five years of my damn career. So I mean, I've wanted to, I've always been a winner. I won or won championships, high school, got to the championship. I mean, college, we were ranked number five team at a certain point. So, I mean, for me, I, I'm, I'm used to winning, used to playing a game at a high level, and I haven't done that since I've been in a Bears uniform. So, I think for me, just expressing that frustration. And, again, it's never, it hasn't been a lack of talent. I mean, especially this year, it's not lack of talent. It's not, it, it's not, it's not any of those things where I can just say, well, we just have a bad, a bad team, a bad roster. It's just, it's just little things, it's just certain situations, a certain way of losing that really, really hurts. And it, and it got to a point for me where, where I was fed up. Did you feel like you were speaking just for yourself or as a vet who's been here as long as you have been? Did you feel like you had the voice of, uh, you know, wanted to make sure you gave voice to what some players were speaking? It might have been nah, afraid I was to say. Speaking just, I was speaking just for myself at that point. I mean, I'm not didn't intend to be you no know, Martin Luther King or nothing like that. I wasn't speaking for, <laughs> for I was speaking strictly for myself, my own frustration. I didn't mention anybody's name. I didn't mention how anybody else felt. I was speaking strictly for me. And again, I have a lot of a lot of passion. I dedicate a lot to this game. I mean, I've dedicated my life to football my whole my whole life. So I mean, it is tough to continue to lose and then losing the fashion we've been losing. And I know the type of work I put in. I mean, I was talking to some of the guys and just the treatments, the long nights where me and some of the guys, the last four or five guys out the building, the extra work I put in, in the building, outside the building, after practice. I mean, after a certain point, man, you want you want to see those see those things benefit you in a way of wins and not just, oh, I'm doing things the right way. You, you, you want to win the game at the end of the day. And it's so much that I sacrifice, that players sacrifice. And I'm sure that there's coaches that sacrifice and have sacrificed a lot time effort and things like that but i mean at the end of the day we 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 want to win i fight for me i know i want to win i can't speak for how bad anybody else wants to win but i play the game to win individually and as a team i mean it's just that, that that's what it's all about it's about winning
we can hear the hurt when you talk about not being able to win and how this has been what you've gone through since being in a Bears uniform. What things would you like to see change? I'm not even gonna lie to you. I don't got no answers for nothing. I just want to win. I mean, I can't tell you all. I want to see this. If it don't add up to winning, I, I, honestly, I don't really give a damn. I just, I just want to win. And whoever comes in here, whoever is a coach, whoever is whatever, it better be about winning. And the results better be need need to be there. So I mean, for me, that's all. That's all I care about. I don't, I don't really care about everything in between. Whatever needs to be done to win has to be done. Ryan Poles has said apparently that the next coach will probably be quote a leader of men unquote what what does that mean to you what is what is a leader of men and 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 does a football team need that yeah right you need that that's one of that's the biggest component that's the first component cuz i mean at the end of the day it's not high school it's not college it's not something where guys are immature to a certain point i mean you got men with families. You have men that, I mean, 30 years old, Mercedes is 40 years old. I mean, you have to be able to command a room when guys with families are listening. Guys who have played 10 plus years are listening. Guys who play 15 plus years are listening. And then, of course, those young guys, you need to earn, not even earn, you have to have that respect and that presence when you walk in the room and when you talk to guys, when you talk to men. I feel like it's not something that any and everybody can get up there. And, and do I think it's something where for an NFL team there's there's certain guys that just have that it factor and I mean of course you see it in players when Blair walks in the room I'm like, okay damn like that's what alpha male looks like and there's the same thing for coaches coach can walk in the room and everybody stops talking and you looking at the man that's 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 speaking and it's a certain presence that's felt and I think that's very important to have um, a leader of of men to be able to gauge his gauge his guys, talk to his guys, have uncomfortable conversations. I mean, all those certain things are just what, what leaders do. And at the end of the day, too, leaders make tough decisions. And the guys around them are going to rally behind it. But we we rally behind a, a leader of men because at the end of the day, it's, it's what's right to do. And I feel like it's a lot easier to do what's right. It's a lot easier to do extra when you have a certain guy standing in, in front of you speaking and commanding you to do certain things. You you made the the part that a lot of football players don't like. You got to the big money second contract. You yeah. would you would have gotten that anywhere. You ended up getting it with the Bears. Do you have any regret that that you stayed here and signed a big money deal with the Bears because it's not winning? No, nah, I don't have no regret. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, of course, all this is surface level. Um, for me, I mean, being human, we have feelings, but beyond all of this, God has me right where he needs to have me at the end of the day, I'm frustrated, but that never, that never changes my, my faith in being where I'm, where I'm supposed to be at, um, at the end of the day. And I mean, like I said, I don't have to like it, but I definitely have learned to trust and respect where, where God has me. And if it's in a situation that's tough, that's losing, I mean, at the end of the day for me, it's a bigger, a bigger purpose, and that's to to grind through it, to push through it, to build a certain level of, I would say, endurance through tough times, whatever it may be. I don't, I don't trust. I mean, I don't have not stopped trusting that I am where I'm supposed to be at. And if it's for me to lead better, if it's for me to bring bring these guys out of a slump that we're that we've been in since I've been here, then I mean that that's what it is. I can't, I can't waver from the belief that I had in the beginning of being where I'm supposed to be. I, I have full faith and confidence that I am where I'm supposed to be, regardless of what it looks like now in front of my face. I don't know what's on the other side of, of adversity. So, I mean, I'm going to just keep pushing like I've been doing year after year. I mean, season after season, game after game. That's just what I what I do. I'm never going to fold from it. You in the locker room, that seems like a leadership moment. Do you feel like you need to do more now, or do you have to fall back? What you mean? Or what like you, uh, in, in, in terms of being a leader on the team, like you were very vocal in the locker room on mm -hmm. this subject and you've been very passionate here talking with us. Does that mean that you should do more of it now? Or do you feel like maybe I should just kind of let things play out and see who else emerges as a leader? No, I mean, I'm going to continue to be myself. At the end of the day, what happened was 
a result of me being myself. I mean, I could have easily suppressed how I felt. I could have easily felt like it wasn't worth saying. But at the end of the day, it was just me being, being myself. And if anybody knows me, they know, they know that I'm a very outspoken person. And uh, when Jalen gets to a certain point, he's going to express how he feels. And that just happened to be five years of it. So, I mean, for me, it's not nothing I'm going to change. I'm going to continue to be who I am on, off the field, in the locker room, communicating with whoever I communicate with. At the end of the day, I know I'm very, very much so professional in that. I've never had a complaint or nobody that ever felt the kind of way about the team man I am, how I am in the locker room, how I communicate, how I play the game. So, I mean, I'm going to continue to be myself until – I feel like I'm told otherwise. But even then, that's going to take a lot for me to change because I am who I am. Um, Jalen, has Thomas Brown addressed you all as a team yet, as the head coach? Has there been opportunity for that yet? Yeah, he did today. How, how, how'd that go? How, how'd that, what you're describing as uh, that command of the room and that leader of men, how's that feel with Thomas today? I mean, great. It's been, I mean, he's been very much so consistent. And just being able to hear his voice more since he took over the OC job uh, has been great. Because um, I know for me, I wasn't too familiar with, excuse me, about who he was and thing just his, his background until, of course, he got the promotion, started hearing a little bit more, and then hearing him talk in front of the team. It's just somebody that you definitely listen to because, I mean, of course, I haven't, we haven't, I would say, as a team heard or seen him talk. So when he did get up there and start talking, it was one of those things like, damn, okay, he's, He's a powerful, powerful guy. His presence is definitely felt when he gets, gets up there and speak. He doesn't just say things just to say him. He's very firm and, and has a good intent with the things that he's saying. I think it was no different today. Going to be being really direct about where we're at in the season, what, what we need to accomplish from the inside out, just really building a, a strong foundation. And he talked about it, and then we went off to our unit meetings. Yeah, there's a love affair going on with a lot of people when they hear Thomas Brown talk, Jalen. He just he comes across very authentic, you know, like like just a just 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 a, a real dude. Um, one thing we were wondering is if he's going to be comfortable with some of you guys speaking the truth as much as you have, um, you know, pu publicly. It's it's been it's been noticeable this year. A lot of people with you know opportunities have spoken the truth. You think Thomas will have? The same kind of feelings about that as Matt, or is that going to be a developing situation? We wonder. Um, I mean, I feel like there can definitely be things. I feel like, how would I say it? I feel like there, there has to be and there should have been always a level of professionalism in speaking on different platforms. Everybody has the right to speak on platforms. That's what we're in this position for is to speak on the platform that we're in and to try to impact those around us. And I feel like there's a professional way to do it. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, we, we go to work with the guys in the building and we owe a certain level of, I would say respect and not just to the guys in the locker room or in the building, but really to, to the game. And I think with respect in the game comes keeping a certain level of professionalism and a certain level of things in house. So, I mean, you can definitely express yourself, express, how you feel or look at a certain situation with also keeping that same level of, I would say, respect for the building, respect for the game. And I feel like at times it's gotten away from, it's gotten away from us, but I feel like for the most part, it's, it's about learning how to do both, learning how to use your platform and speak your truth with also a certain level of respect for the building. So I know for myself, I feel like I've, I've been able to do that and, we just all can have to continue to to do that. And I think he knows and understands that, but also expects us to have a certain level of professionalism and respect for the locker room. When it comes to you communicating with him, I'm I'm guessing you're like, look, I, I, I need to say what I need to say, but this guy is also going through a tremendous change right now. How do you feel like that's going to work from an individual basis if – one of the team leaders, one of the guys that that one of the captains wants to talk with the coach. How do you express yourself freely and openly, or is that something that you have to figure out over the next couple of weeks with him? I think, quite honestly, um, I mean, it's not really that hard. At the end of the day, he's, if I'm not mistaken, unless y'all know something, I don't know. He's a head coach for the first time in his career for the last five games of a season that has went downhill. And I think for me, it's a certain level of 
compassion and grace, I would say, for another human being, another man that's, of course, somebody I work with, but also stepping into a new role. So, I mean, I'm not going to just tell this man everything that I'm feeling and my sad concerns or whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, we got five games left to do the absolute best that we can do and try to go 5-0. and zero. And for me, my biggest thing is showing him, I mean, that's a clean slate, showing him absolute respect for whatever he asks for me to try to go out there and do it and really just go from there. I mean, it's not really about just everything, how I feel. Like I said, I don't speak on how I feel all the time and every moment and opportunity that I get. I mean, it's very, very selective when, when I do speak and if there is something that for some reason just completely rubs me the wrong way or there's something that I need to voice, then of course I'll do it in a professional way and talk to him, but I don't think that's going to be the case with him being a head coach for the first time. I know that's his end goal. That's every coach's end goal, but at the end of the day, it's not too much to talk about and express feelings. These last five games aren't about feelings. These last five games is hmm. about establishing the culture in, in this building, and that's what we need to do, and that's what I'm control of, in control of in the locker room is establishing a culture, going out here, finding the best ways to compete, win games, put the best take that we can on film, players, coaches, whatever it may be, because the reality of the situation is once these five games are up, everybody's job is 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 in question. Coaches, players, I mean, whoever comes in here gets the opportunity to build a whole new team, whole new roster. I mean, we we just seen that. So hmm. for me, I'm just trying to make sure that the defense team, we do what we need to do inside the building with each other, continue to love one another and put the best five tape or five games we can on tape and then see where we can go from there. You mentioned you heard about it on, on, on ESPN, that the coach getting fired. It was, is that true for all the players? Like, is that how all you guys found out? Or did anybody get phone calls or, to your knowledge? No, I don't know. I didn't really ask anybody. I didn't, it wasn't a group group chat conversation. Okay. I mean, it I, did, it did it bother you that you found out on TV instead of finding out from someone who has authority? Nah, because I mean, at the end of the day, you don't know what, what went on into or what went into that situation. I'm not, oh, well, I should have been called first. I mean, and at the end of the day, there's, I'm sure there was tough conversations, hard conversations. I'm not just going around feeling entitled to where I need to be the first one told and different things like that. I mean, at the end of the day, there's people that leak things maybe too early or whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, I did receive a phone call, but I mean, of course it wasn't the first one. It's hard to just pinpoint somebody being the first one. I mean, I'm not, I'm not entitled that way. I'm not really tripping. Got you. Off of off of the situation. Who called you? Holes. Ah, uh, good. Um, that's great to hear. That's good to hear. Absolutely. Um, and and then a listener reminded us of this going all the way back to the beginning of the Matty Berflus era, Jalen Johnson, which you of course precede here in Chicago. Yeah. Um, you were on second team in those first OTAs. Looking back, third, th <laughs> third team. Y'all just seen the second team. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that about? And did anything linger all the way? All the way to the end for you. Nah, I mean, what was it about? I mean, I guess it was, of course, me not being there, being present enough, I would say, in the phase one, two, and things like that, I guess, put a question mark on my head for from and whoever, I don't know, um, as far as whose exact decision it was. But I guess there were some question marks on different things. And when I came in for... OTAs, like I communicated, I was I was with the third strings, and then as time went on, I went from second to first. So I mean, I don't I don't know. I can't really speak on it too much because it was three years ago, and I don't know. I guess who the exact source of the decision making was, but I mean, of course, situation like that is just something that you laugh at looking back at. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, that was that's really about it. I mean, for me having hard feeling thing like that 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 takes more energy to to keep something like that on me of course you know you you never forget as time goes on and certain things that have happened but that's not something that i just carried in my day-to-day -day thinking about i mean at the end of the day i play the game bigger than any anything in anybody in the building so i mean i, I i'm not really so that's not something i hold on to i play the game for much higher purpose and much higher being I'd have to do some checking on this, and you're someone who comes from a football family. When you look up and right. down the Bears organizationally right now, you have a black president, a black GM, a black assistant GM, a black head coach, black quarterback, black coordinators. I don't know if if 
anyone ever thought that we'd get to this day in the NFL. Now, we got here backwards. We got no. here real backwards. <laughs> no uh, but, no but, but what do you think about that? Is, does it mean anything to you at all that you are now part of something that seems a little historic? Nah, it's, it's crazy. I was thinking about that the other day, just seeing so many, I would say, black coaches in in, in position of power. And I think it it's more than just, I would say, just being a black head, a black person in position of power. I think it's more for me and just the reality of the situation is looking at looking at the building, looking at your roster and just predominantly having a black or a black dominated team. I think that kind of goes throughout the NFL. I think it's more black people or African Americans on on each team than any other than any other race. And I feel like it's a certain level of relatability, especially for your head coach, for your president, to be able to lead teams that are predominantly black, lead position groups. I mean, if you look at our defense, I think there's maybe two. No, I know Jack, and I'm trying to figure out who the other non-black. Oh, no, uh, Noah Sewell. So it's like, but even even then, he's still brown skin. If you have him in the helmet and shoulder pad, you don't know that he's not that he's not black, or or you wouldn't know that he. Yeah, you wouldn't know that he's not black. But I think just something like that, it takes a certain level of relatability. And again, just being a certain leader of men. And again, not all, I would say, black coaches, black presidents, GMs, things like that are just the best. And of course, I mean, no, nobody is, no matter what your damn race is. But I think the the good ones are able to relate a different way um, than, I would say, coaches who who aren't. But again, it's not saying that. I mean, white coaches or whoever, whatever coaches there are, can't relate or can't lead a certain team. I think it is just a different power, power sense and respectability when you have the right black head coach or right um, black assistant, whatever it may be, GM, I mean, owner, OC, DC, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I think it's just a, a certain level of respect that you go into that situation having. It's it's kind of weird too because if we go back to the the throwback jerseys like the the winged helmet and oh, stuff, right, which are great looking jerseys by the way, yeah, but, where where the players that wore them three years ago or four yeah. years ago were the first black players to ever wear them. Yep. To mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. entire organization, except for ownership, the entire or- and Jack Sanborn. And <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Jack. Oh, Jack, defense, Jack oh, had defense. a hell of a game, by the way. He was out there balling. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah like, no, that's white chocolate. <laughs> Shout out to ownership and Jack Sanborn. That's incredible. All right, Jalen, we got to get to the important stuff. Um, Thanksgiving. What, what did you cook that was the most delicious on Friday, Jalen, for your Thanksgiving? Probably the, probably the mac and cheese. I really made more of the sides. I for, it's crazy. I wasn't even in the damn mind frame to to tick tock or record nothing. I was over. I was just trying to. Get some good food going, but I made uh, mac and cheese, greens, yams, um, and then my mother in law she made the ham. St- uh, I keep saying stuff and dressing. I actually just found out the damn difference between stuffing and dressing, but that's another conversation. But dressing, what else do we have? Oh, and then I made my uh, my wife some some chicken. She didn't want no ham, so <laughs> I did. I, I did that. That sounds awesome. So everyone was. I mean, I know you were pissed. But I, was everyone <laughs> happy with the meal and the time together? Yeah, no, nah, we was all, I mean, nah, I didn't bring no bad vibes to Thanksgiving. I just wasn't in the content creating mode. But nah, we definitely had, had, a, had a good time. Definitely small, intimate. Um, but it, it, it was really good. I had my oldest daughter here. And again, she got to meet um, my, my youngest daughter. So it was, it was a good time. Really enjoyed the, the Thanksgiving for sure. That's beautiful. Not going to lie. The end of that game brought bad vibes to my Thanksgiving. Hey, I, I, I apologize for that, Boston. Any role I played, <laughs> you didn't no, play any really, role. It really wasn't your you fault. You Jaylen. busted your ass, I, man. I think, I think that was made clear that it wasn't your fault. <laughs> it's the third week in the third week in a row that a win is sitting there against a division rival, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keenan said it. Keenan said you guys did enough. He wasn't lying. No, he wasn't lying. It was, oh. definitely wasn't your fault, Jalen. As always, man, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for your honesty. The the audience like just loves you and 
And we do too, quite frankly. So thanks for always being there for us. Good luck. I hope this turns around because I can I can hear how frustrated you are when it comes to the winning part. And I hope that that turns around because you deserve it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys. You guys have a good one. You too. It's Jalen Johnson.